Hello, my name is Ryan Murray from the sheetmetalkid.com. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating on how to properly use 10 snips. Okay, so obviously, like any other tool, there's a wide range of them on the market. Um, you got your standard bulldogs, which um, all of my bulldogs right here, these three, um, are a little bit longer. Um, these ones were all German made um, when Wiss was making them in Germany. So these actually were the pair that my great grandfather used. Um, next, I got these ones that I picked up at a garage sale. Um, they're a, a long build, 10 snip, uh, more for pattern cutting, long distances. Um, if we go back to the these short build ones, uh, these are can be used for long long cuts, but also can be used for short pattern uh, notching if they're sharp and set correctly. And then you got these little peanut whistles here. Um, they're they're cute. I don't particularly like using them, but uh, they can definitely get the job done if they're sharp enough, of course. Then you have your regular whisk tin snips which you can buy at uh, Home Depot. These are probably the most notorious brand of tin snips that are out there. Um, you got your reds and your greens. Um, and then these are the ones that I prefer. These are Malco offset, um, non-serrated edges, so they don't leave any uh, any serrated edge on, on the sheet metal itself, also in reds or greens. I particularly um, use mostly my offsets uh, they take a little bit of getting used to, but those are what I'll be demonstrating with today because they also uh, show an exaggerated version of what happens when you cut sheet metal. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of the tin snips. Um, when you buy them, you'll see on the package that reds cut to the left and greens cut to the right, which means um, the way that your blades are swapped. Now see, if I hold these straight up, latch pointing to my right then you'll see how these blades offset differently same direction but as you can see the waste is made to come off this edge and the waste is made to come off this edge on the greens so whether or not they're straight blade or they are offsets like the ones that I use um, you'll notice that the blade orientation is also the same. See both are on both on, on both sides. The waste is made to drop off on the left hand side. So then we'll go ahead and take our reds and our greens and I'll demonstrate to you how to properly use them. Now when I was talking about the direction of the snips, if I were to take this here and I wanted to cut a rounded edge like this out of the sheet metal then really whoever tells you that you can't that you have to use reds or you have to use greens obviously does not know what they're talking about now I said that the reds are were made to go ahead and cut like so greens are made to cut like so so if you were to take these around and you flip them around your waste material is still going the correct way so the same same deal if you wanted, if you're in a tough position where say you have a wall here or you're cutting flashing, something of that nature, then you're going to have to use your greens. You can go ahead and start using your greens and as I cut this, you'll see that the, the metal starts folding up the same way. Same with if I wanted to cut and keep on my line, I can still use my reds coming this way, it's just that my metal is going to start folding underneath that way. So really, it's all in how you use, use the tool. It's knowing the knowledge of the tool and how, how to properly use it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this rounded piece out. Once again, I'm never going to come all the way down because if, if I came all the way down, I'll go ahead and show you again of what happens when you come all the way down. You dimples the metal. And hopefully you can see that. See how there's a nasty little dimple there? You'll see people come in here and they'll go. And uh, say they wanted to cut along the same line, they'll come and use it like a pair of scissors where it's all the way down. 
That's where you end up with all those doohickeys. Those are all stitches getters, what I call them. So, they also risk the idea of, of if you cut all the way down and then you come over this way, what I'm going to end up doing, if I go all the way down and then cut like that, try and get that out of there, is that you'll leave what we call little fish hooks. Now see that right there? Those are serrated edges that, that will now, you have the opportunity of getting cut even worse. Good sheet metal workers only cut themselves good about one time a year. So, um, same deal with the greens. As I cut, my fold comes up like so, like it should. And now, using my reds or my greens, I'm cutting a nice pattern to what I need. See how clean that is now? No dimples, no doohickeys, no foot fish hooks. That's our motto here. So say you had something along the lines of you were trying to get um, this out of a pair of she sheet. And say that um, this right here was 10 foot. I mean, you, there's no way for you to go ahead and cut that line without making at least some sort of relief cut. So the best way to do this is to take the bulldogs that you got or let's just say you only had aviation snips I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut close to where I got and I'm gonna cut a relief cut now now it's free for me to go ahead and cut along my line now keep in mind this side of the metal is my finish. What I want to keep as drop is this. This is going to be scrap after the time I'm done with it. So I can go ahead and start cutting my metal and the key to cutting curves is to keep your blades straight up and down like so. If you take and you're, you start exaggerating and you start cutting like this or like this even, you're going to spring your snips. You're going to screw them all up. See if I do that it's not the way that the, the blades were cut. If I squeeze these all the way, it's gonna, stri it's gonna stretch out my bolt right here, and then my, my snips won't cut nearly as fine as what I want them to. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this rounded figure out. As I go, I'm taking my drop piece, and I'm gonna go ahead and just start folding that up, and I'm gonna use that as my leverage to go ahead and cut. Now, you think, Man, that's, that's easy enough. If you wanted uh, to switch directions, you can also take your greens. Keep coming this way, take your, take your drop and start folding your drop up. And we can turn these any which direction that we really want to in order to get this cut to go nice. As long as we're keeping our blades straight up and down. That's the most key part. We don't want to flop them like this. We don't want to flip them like that. We want to make sure that our not our tin snips or using the blades correctly and as we go we're not coming down all the way we're just creating a nice way for our tin snips to stay straight and we come to our end only at the end is where we really want to come all the way down now I have a little bit hanging over there I know that um, if I was using a pencil or if I was using copper or or any other type of high content zinc, I can go ahead and keep trimming that out. That's another way that you can tell if they're a good pair of snips or not, is by how much they'll really take out. If you got snips like this, that you can cut the thickness of the metal off. You can't see that, but I really just cut probably a, less than a sixteenth of an inch off, and I'm trimming that out.